this third generation C4 is a far more creditable offering for Citroen in the family hatchback sector, and the French brand hopes can play its part in rejuvenating this segment by integrating SUV style and the option of full electric power into traditional family hatch design. Plus there's a clever suspension system to make this contender feel really Citroen-esque. This car, says Citroen CEO Vincent Kobe, is Citroen to the core. This third generation C4 model's task is to return the brand to credibility in the focus and golf dominated family hatch sector. The last C4 launched in 2010 wasn't particularly Citroen and it wasn't particularly successful either. It sold mainly on low price and towards the end of its life, not even on that. In 2017, Citroen tried to replace it with an evolved family hatch orientated version of the C4 Cactus crossover, but that didn't work either. This third generation C4, launched in mid-2020, plays the crossover card too in terms of some aspects of its visual appeal, but unlike with the previous C4 Cactus, in buying one, you won't feel you're being forced into an SUV, rather against your will. Instead, this C4 plays to the things that people tend to like about Citroens, innovative design, a distinctive feel, and exemplary ride quality. Though this C4 is intended to be a focused sized family hatch, under the skin it sits on a stretched version of the PSA Group's CMP Super Mini platform. Now the reason why is that those underpinnings support all electric drive and that appears here in the form of the EC4 battery power model that the brand offers as an alternative to the conventional petrol and diesel variants. We're trying the PureTech petrol one here. So at last, with the modern Citroen, there's innovation that's more than skin deep, which is appropriate given the historical significance of some of the nine generations of compact Citroen car model lines that have preceded this one. The very first Andre Citroen-inspired C4 of 1928, the AMI models of the 60s, the futuristic GS of 1971, and the stylized BX of the 80s. More recent compact Citroen hatches, the ZX of 91, the Zara of 97, and the last two generations of C4 in 2004 and 2010 have been rather less memorable. But this car sets out to remind us of what a Citroen of this kind really ought to be. So, how does it stack up? Well, that's what we're here to find out. Now, if you've never really understood why so much of family hatchback design is devoted to high-speed handling engineering uh, that few owners particularly want and most can never properly use and would understand that point of view, then you'll get what Citroen is trying to do with this C4 at once. Now, whether you choose this car in its PureTech petrol form uh, that we have here or in its Blue HDI diesel or EC4 full electric forms, it's an uber laid-back approach what a C-segment hatch should be. It's been described as being more supple than your Pilates teacher, with a seat inside that's comfier than your favorite armchair, and cruising refinement, which is quieter than a weekend without the kids. Now, if ever a family hatchback set out to lower rather than to raise the heart rate, then this is it. Primarily, all of this comes courtesy of what Citroen calls its advanced comfort program, uh, the pillars behind which are more thickly padded advanced comfort seats and, rather more significantly, the brand's heavily patented progressive hydraulic cushion suspension. The name of this damping might suggest the kind of air springing that the brand is historically famous for. Uh, the current trend might suggest it to be driver adaptive. Neither solution, though, fits with the approach that Citroen has to take at this price point. Uh, the company lost money building too much damping complexity into its affordable cars in the 60s and in the 70s, and it's not about to make the same mistake again. So what we've got here instead is an ordinary, everyday spring and damper setup, which has been reimagined in a rather clever way. 
In ordinary cars, such a system usually works with rubber bump stops that the suspension coil crashes against uh, over bumps at the top and the bottom of wheel travel. Uh, the progressive hydraulic cushion setup replaces these stops with hydraulic dampers and these cushion the impacts over things like speed humps and tarmac tears and they allow the fitment of softer springs and dampers and that produces the exemplary ride quality that Citroen claims this car can deliver. Uh, it does seem to work too. Now we wouldn't join the French brand in describing it as magic carpet like, uh, you'd really need proper air suspension for that. But overall this is the best conventional springing setup that we've tried. It eases the car over poor surfaces and it floats you from crest to crest in a way that makes the ride of some class competitors feel rather crude and as advertised the thick quilted advanced comfort front seats that you get on plusher variants like this one embellish the feeling of Gallic luxury even further. If Citroen could affordably combine all this with the active scan suspension technology that's fitted to this car's close Stellantis Group family hatch cousin, the DS4, and that's a setup that predicts and prepares for bumps before you reach them, then you'd think that something really special might be possible. For the time being though, uh, what we're left with is a damping solution that works well but is affected rather more than you'd hope by things like deeper potholes and the more extreme speed bumps and that's especially true if you have the largest 18 inch wheel rims. Perhaps though that's the price you pay for getting a big improvement in ride comfort without the corresponding payback of a family five door that handles like a waterbed. Enough on that, you're going to want to know about engines, assuming you want an engine of course, uh, because unlike its close PSO group family hatch cousins, the Peugeot 308 and the DS4, this Citroen is based around the conglomerate's CMP Supermini platform and so it has access to the group's full electric technology, hence as referenced earlier, the inclusion within the range of the EC4 battery power model which we have tested in a separate film and which we'll brief you on shortly. Now today uh, we're at the wheel of a fossil fueled version of this model and this is the one with the PureTech petrol engine that most customers will choose. Uh, the familiar 1.2 litre three cylinder unit comes in three main flavours. Uh, there's a base 100 HP unit offered only with a six speed manual or a top 155 horsepower variant which is only offered with E88 eight speed automatic transmission. In between is the variant of this power plant that most will choose and that's the 130 horsepower version that we're trying here and that is available in both manual or auto forms. In all its forms this is a great little engine which is just as well because without it Citroen along with Peugeot, Vauxhall and DS would hardly sell any cars at all. It responds to prods of your right foot with a cheerful warble and in 130 horsepower manual form it makes 62 from rest in 8.9 seconds if you're quick with a stick shift which isn't easy. Uh, one writer described its shift action as akin to wiggling a plunger in a recalcitrant sink. It wouldn't go quite as far as that but we would agree that this torque converter E88 Auto is much better suited to the kind of car this is with smooth changes and a preference for racing up the ratios in a bid to save fuel. Uh, with this transmission fitted the 62 miles an hour sprint time takes 9.4 seconds or 8.5 if you stretched up to the 155 horsepower version of this engine. For the few that'll want a diesel, uh, Citroen does supply its usual 130 horsepower 1.5 litre blue HDI unit, although only with an auto gearbox. On paper, the sprint performance of that black pump fuel power plant is similar, rest to 62 in 9.5 seconds, but with 30% more torque on tap, uh, blue HDI C4 will feel livelier, particularly if you're driving fully laden. As with the two petrol models, it tops out just shy of 130 miles an hour. If you're a prospective customer for the all-electric EC4 version of this car, you'd be no more likely to choose a diesel than you would be to fill up your recycling bin with toxic waste. With a BEV version of this model, there's a 134 horsepower electric motor uh, powered by a 50 kilowatt hour lithium-ion battery. And that's the sort of recipe that in other small electric vehicles spears you away from rest like a scalded cat. 
Even here though, the laid back Citroen demeanor prevails and that's thanks to throttle travel that's intentionally damped down a bit so you don't pointlessly use an important glug of battery charge wearing away the tread from your front tyres every time you set off from rest. There's no one pedal driving option for the EC4 like the sort of thing you get in the Nissan Leaf but there is an extra B mode which gives greater lift off deceleration so boosting the battery's energy harvesting efforts so you can get somewhere close to the claimed 217 mile range. Refinement of course is phantom like as in any EV although as you might be able to hear it's also pretty good in this considerably cheaper PureTech petrol model uh, which doesn't have to lug around all the extra 300 kilos of curb weight that's inflicted upon the EC4. In the electric variant you'll feel that through the corners and over sharp bumps. Steering feedback from the EC4 is slightly worse too although to be honest you don't feel much through the helm of a combustion powered C4 either. Uh, the response is somewhat over assisted and it's springy which is all very Citroen and explains why most enthusiast magazines tend to disparage this French hatch. But we don't. Uh, provided you want the kind of car that this is trying to be you might very well conclude that nothing else in this segment would really suit your needs better. It demands uh, very little from you, it eases over suburbia's terrible tarmac and it sets your forward viewpoint a little higher thanks to its crossover -y body shape. There's even a limited amount of autonomous drive tech if you stretch up to a top variant like this one which is equipped with Citroen's highway drive assist system and that combines the stop and go version of adaptive cruise control with active lane departure warning and that takes over throttle, steering and braking duties at a cruise or in heavy traffic. All you have to do is to keep your hands on the capacitive wheel rim. That setup suits the C4 perfectly. Whether your driving style will is another question entirely though. The EAT Auto gearbox that almost every customer of this Citroen is going to want has been given a sport mode to add to its usual normal and eco settings. Uh, why? We're not quite sure because a typical C4 owner will hardly ever want to use that. He or she will prefer to enjoy each journey rather than stress away a few extra seconds of it, which when you think about it is rather sensible. This Citroen, charismatic and individual as it is, could be described in that way too. So how is Citroen going to be Citroen, different, individual and trendsetting in the modern family hatch market? Well, the individualist look for this third generation C4 gives us our answer to that question. The idea with this C-segment family hatch five door is to deliver the crossover look that the European market currently craves, but without the traditional SUV drawbacks which lead to inefficiency. So things like a big frontal area and an overly raised ride height. This is the result, ostensibly a family hatch, but almost an SUV coupe in the style of, say, a Kia Exceed or a Toyota CHR. It's an interesting look, no question. This generation of C4 has been called the most individualist family car to wear this maker's double chevron badge since Citroen's GS model of the 70s. And if you're old enough to remember that car, then you might conceivably recognise elements of it here in the rear three-quarter view. Uh, Citroen says that the crossover cues aren't for crossover purposes. The matte black finished wheel arches here, they're not for arduous tracks, but to prevent supermarket car park dings. And although this C4 doesn't sit as high as a proper SUV, it does have a higher than focus class average 156 mm ride height, which is there to offer a high vantage point and better all-round visibility. There's also plenty of signature Citroen design, much of it borrowed from the brand's most recent C Experience, Ami 1 and 1919 concept cars, particularly at the front where the bonnet is high and horizontal and the V-shaped lighting design is evolved from the company's previous double stage headlight signature. It features these chrome strips which flow out from the central chevron badge to frame the two forms of LED illumination here, the daytime running lights at the top and the three module headlamps at the bottom here. 
The two air intakes use a macro chevron pattern. The lower opening is underscored by a matte black lower skirt and framed by fog lamp cutouts, which, as with other Citroens, can, above base trim, feature colour personalised surrounds in a choice of three colours, anodised deep red, a shade that the brand calls metallic sand, or with the two top spec variants in glossy black, or this textured grey finish. In profile, you'll notice the swept back rear roof line, the interesting kink at the base of the rear C-pillar, and the large wheels, which can, as here, be up to 18 inches in size. And perhaps also what Citroen calls the air bump, which features each side on this lower sill. Now here it's less of a bump and more of a recessed panel, and that's another feature that can be colour customised, and the shade will be the same as the one chosen for the fog lamp surrounds. Overall, it's a good-looking car, designed by the stylist who fashioned Citroen's last truly innovative model, the C6. Interesting details are everywhere, especially here at the back, where the two-piece rear window claims inspiration from the C4 Coupe of 2004, with a rear spoiler which splits the tailgate glass. There's more striking use of V-shaped LED lighting, while further down, the matte black bumper has gloss black decoration. The lower part of it incorporates chromed tailpipes on combustion models like this one, or special inserts for the EC4. And the two outer scoops pick up the design language of the C5 Aircross SUV. You might have noticed how short the overhangs are. That's because the CMP platform this car sits on is usually used within PSA Group designs for much smaller cars, so it's been stretched here right to its limit. Right, time to take a look inside. Now, people often like quirky looks. They tend to be less forgiving of quirky cabins. Which, to some extent, is what you get here. Although Citroen, of course, describes this interior differently as being comfortable and cosy. It'll certainly be comfortable if you stretch to a model with these thicker, advanced comfort seats. Uh, we're going to brief you on those in just a moment, uh, on which you perch with that slightly higher vantage point ahead that we mentioned earlier on. Uh, the cosy claim, that's not quite as easy to endorse. Uh, Citroen's chosen not to offer UK customers the brighter blue or red trimming packages, which on the Continental cars lift the cabin ambiance, so right-hand drive customers are stuck with a rather doer finish, uh, usually grey, the urban grey ambiance package, which is fitted to the mainstream models, or black, the hype black ambiance finish that you get with this top Shine Plus spec. Which is a pity, because the design here would benefit from a jauntier vibe. Through the oddly shaped three-spoke wheel, you view a pared-back version of the quite innovative digital instrument panel that's used in the brand C5 Aircross SUV, with a 5.5-inch uh, backlit TFT screen, whose readouts you flip through here by jabbing the left indicator stalk. Uh, the lower part of the centre console, that stretches broadly away in front of you into a deep, smartly backlit area at the base of the centre stack. And Citroen's obsession with glossy piano black trimming continues here. Uh, that finish decorates not only this console, but also the air vents, uh, the higher central part of the fascia, and also the steering wheel spokes. There are also satin chrome touches, a soft touch dashboard top, this strange but smartly fashioned Gearshe silver auto gear shift toggle switch and these smart little angled fabric strips on the door cards. But none of it's quite enough to distract your attention from the hard-working plastic surrounding the glove box and the chrome-finished rotary climate controls. Still, at least you get separate climate controls, the sort of thing that against their better judgement, Citroen's designers relegated into fiddly little infotainment screen submenus in this car's C4 Cactus predecessor. Uh, that screen here is a glossy, ultra-thin, 10-inch, borderless touchscreen display that's positioned high on the centre stack, and it features a physical chrome dial with side knurling embellished with a chevron motif. Uh, this monitor also has lower shortcut home and vehicle buttons, and it includes pretty much everything that you'd ever want. Uh, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone integration, uh, voice activation, Bluetooth, the option of Wi-Fi connectivity and a six-speaker DAB audio system. As usual with the Citroen screens, you can set personal profile activation for this monitor and you can tailor its display in different shades, red, blue or brown. 
Avoid base trim and you get Citroen Connect Nav Navigation 2 with TomTom Tom Live Traffic Services, while this top spec variant features an Archimist Citroen Hi-Fi system audio upgrade, which only gives you two more speakers, but it features neat tweeters in the front A-pillars and a subwoofer in the boot. Some curious choices on spec have been made here. There's no multicolour ambient lighting option, and you have to stretch right up to the very priciest model for this wireless smartphone charging mat. Now, that's the sort of thing that most people want these days, but nearly every model in the range uh, is embellished with a head-up display uh, and also with this rather unusual inclusion, the Citroen Smart Pad Support Package. Uh, this must have been really quite expensive to engineer, giving you a novel slide-out tablet mount in front of the front passenger here, uh, plus a lower drawer in which to keep the device. No other car on the market offers anything quite like this. Or anything quite like these advanced comfort front seats that we mentioned earlier. Uh, they feature particularly broad bases, foam that's 15 millimeters thicker than usual for extra support, plus extra quilted padding to create an inviting visual signature that doesn't disappoint you once you squish yourself into place. Uh, there's standard lumbar support too, uh, the headrests look like a bit of an afterthought though, and there's not much side support, but otherwise these pews brilliantly replicate the kind of feeling of cosseting Gallic luxury that affordable Citroens of the 60s and of the 70s used to offer. Uh, Colour-coordinated strips across the seat base edge and the shoulder line there add a smart finishing touch. In comparison, the front chairs that you get in rivals are dull and unyielding. Here, you'll really notice a difference. Not everything's great, of course. All that piano black trimming quickly attracts dust and hairs, so you'll constantly be wiping it. The 12-volt socket that you'll hardly ever use is ridiculously over-prominent at the base of the centre stack here, and the steering wheel looks like it belongs in a cheaper kind of car. But these things apart, this is a big step forward for Citroen cabin design. Uh, you wouldn't necessarily mistake this for a Volkswagen Group product, but everything certainly seems pretty well screwed together and there's little to fault about the ergonomics, unless, of course, you object to the slightly restricted view rearwards, and that comes as part of Citroen's decision to fit that split rear tailgate screen we mentioned earlier. Uh, that's an issue the brand has compensated for, uh, not only with the standard fitment of rear parking sensors back there, but also with the installation of a rear parking camera on virtually every model. There's a reasonable amount of storage space too. That pull-out drawer ahead of the front passenger that we mentioned earlier doesn't compromise the size of the glove box, or at least it doesn't in left-hand drive models anyway. Right hookers, like this one, suffer from the usual Peugeot and Citroen malady of a fuse box that takes up half of the glove box capacity. I mean, every other automotive manufacturing group, uh, they managed to design a right-hand drive conversion without resorting to that. Uh, it's annoying uh, because apart from the slim drawer and this very compactly shaped deep box between the seats here, there really aren't many places to store things away from prying eyes. Uh, the kind of under-seat pull-out drawers that Citroen offers on its MPVs, they would have really helped here. Still, there is the broad area at the base of the centre stack we mentioned earlier, with a further ledge above that, uh, which on this top model accommodates a wireless charging pad. Uh, we like the fact that you get a choice of both USB-A and USB-C ports uh, with which to connect up your devices, although, of course, wireless connectivity would have been even better. Uh, and although an overhead sunglasses compartment uh, hasn't been installed, there are ticket clips on the sun visors, there are coin trays in the door pulls, and you get twin cup holders between the seats here, covered by a neat concertina ring top. Let's take a look in the rear. Now remember we mentioned earlier that this car sits on a stretched version of a platform that was designed for smaller super minis rather than one intended for Focus and Golf Class family hatches. Well, it's back here that you'd expect any compromises caused through the adoption of that approach to make themselves felt. Uh, our expectations here weren't actually that high, to be honest. Uh, this C4 is 4.35 metres long, and that's not huge for a Focus-sized hatch.
But once inside, the space is actually quite reasonable on the rear seat. Uh, Citroen reckons that knee room back here is close to being best in class, which isn't true at all, but it is pretty close to the class standard. And it'll be fine for a couple of adults on medium length trips. Uh, the other thing that you might rightly be rather concerned about uh, when you're sitting in the back of a family hatch like this one with a coupe-like swept back roof line is headspace. Now, Citroen has mitigated the problem here by scalloping out the ceiling height for the outer two passengers, but uh, the need to incorporate overhead lighting up there means any poor old middle seat occupant is going to be rather more comfortable if they're of school age. If you don't need to take anyone in the middle seat and you stretch the top spec trim, you'll be free to use this fold-out centre armrest, which incorporates a pen tray as well as the usual cup holders. Uh, there's no sliding or reclining flexibility for the bench or the backrest, but younger folk will be pleased to see that there is a USB-A socket provided back here. On this top variant, you get a USB-C socket too. And these small rear quarter lights add much-needed illumination into this darkly trimmed space. Uh, overhead coat hooks, they've been uh, forgotten, and the headrests dig into your back rather uh, until you raise them. But uh, you do get the usual seat back pockets and also twin central vents. Plus, there are also individual overhead reading lights and coin trays in the door pulls. Let's take a look out back. Uh, there's no power tailgate option. It's a pity because this hatch is quite heavy to lift. Still, at least the boot is reasonably sized at 380 litres. That's about the same as a Focus or a Golf. Although the fact that this model's Peugeot 308 close cousin can give you 32 litres more betrays that car's use of a more class appropriate basic platform. At least the capacity you do get is the same whether you choose this car with a combustion engine or with full electric power. And the space is very usable, and that's thanks to this dual height adjustable boot floor. In a volume spec C4 lacking this top version's lower boot mounted subwoofer, uh, there would be a bit more space underneath the cargo base too, although only because Citroen follows the uh, rather disappointingly typical class policy of failing to include any kind of spare wheel. There's a reasonably low loading sill height of 715 millimeters, so getting bulky stuff in ought to be pretty straightforward. And you get side compartments on the left and right with upper bag hooks on either side, four lower tie down points. And on the left, there's an elasticated side strap and a light. There's no useful 40-20-40 seat back split, but with this top spec trim, a ski hatch is provided for longer items. Push forward the 60-40 split backrest and you can improve the space on offer to 1,250 litres. Right, let's get to prices, which from the launch of this car were pitched in the 21 to 28,000 pound bracket for the combustion engine models. You will need a fair bit more than that for an equivalently trimmed all electric EC4, of course. At the time of this test in spring 2021, prospective customers for that variant were being asked to pay somewhere in the 31,000 to 32,500 pound bracket, uh, following subtraction, of course of the £2,500 government plug-in car grant. There's just this single five-door body shape. The first generation C4 could also be had as a three-door coupe, but there's plenty of spec choice. Uh, the feeblest combustion PureTech 100 petrol and blue HDI 110 diesel engines can be had with an entry sense standard of trim, but otherwise both combustion and electric C4s are sold with a choice of four trim levels, Sense, Sense Plus, Shine, or as in this case, Top Shine Plus. Uh, most will want the mid-range Sense Plus or Shine trim levels, which focus on the engine Citroen thinks most customers will want. Uh, the majority will be looking at the PureTech 130 petrol engine that we're trying here, uh, with most likely to want to stump up an extra £1,400 that the brand wants for the E88 eight-speed automatic transmission that really suits this car. That's a gearbox that you'll have to have if you want this petrol engine in its perkier 155 horsepower form, which is available with the top two trim levels. Uh, alternatives to PureTech petrol power cost more, about £800 more if you want the Blue HDI 110 horsepower manual model over a PureTech 130 manual, 
or about £1,500 more if you want the Blue HDI 130 Auto over a PureTech 130 Auto. Incidentally, the difference between a PureTech 130 Auto model like this one and an equivalently trimmed electric EC4, which of course is also an Auto, is nearly £6,000. On to how the value proposition here compares to family hatchback segment rivals. And let's start with the way that the ordinary combustion engine C4 models fit into this class. Now, we're going to base our comparisons here against this uh, mid-range PureTech 130 petrol variant because that's the one that most customers for this Citroen will be considering. Uh, it is cheaper than its close PSA family hatch cousin models, which share its combustion engines. That's the Peugeot 308 and the DS4. But you're probably more likely to be interested in how it compares on price to the two segment market leaders, Ford's Focus and Volkswagen's Golf. Well, a comparable one litre EcoBoost 125 PS Focus would save you up to around £1,000. But a comparable Volkswagen Golf uh, 1.5 litre TSI 130 PS, that would cost about £1,000 more. Make of that what you will. In base form, this C4 undercuts both those rivals on price by a little in the case of the Focus and by nearly £2,000 in the case of the Golf. Plus, this Citroen offers more equipment too, and that compensates for the fact that a base C4 diesel is slightly pricier than the equivalent Eco Blue powered Focus. Again, the Golf in base TDI form is much more expensive, about £1,500 more in fact. This Citroen, though, tends to appeal to customers who are prepared to look beyond those two market favourites. Uh, maybe at cars in this sector like the Honda Civic, uh, the Mazda 3 and the Mini Clubman, uh, which all cost around about the same. Now, you might be tempted by the thought of a base spec Audi A3 Sportback, the 30 TFSI one, for much the same money too. But to get that, you'd have to accept less power and equipment. A typical C4 customer might have possible interest in sector models like the Hyundai i30, uh, Renault's Megane, Seat's Leon or Skoda's Octavia, which cost a bit less, or in other C-segment family hatches like the Vauxhall Astra and the Kia Seed, equivalent versions of which will save you around £2,500 over this Citroen. But in all these comparisons, uh, this C4's comparatively generous equipment tally may help to provide a more compelling showroom incentive. Uh, even if you compare against a really cheap segment contender like Fiat's bargain basement Tipo. Um, in the past, we would also have referenced here Toyota's Corolla, but that is now only offered as a full hybrid, so it costs significantly more. None of these observations will be of much use to you if your attention has been taken instead by the all-electric EC4 version of this Citroen. So let's briefly look at the competitors for that variant. Uh, obvious BEV family hatch rivals include the slightly more expensive Volkswagen ID3, volume 58 kilowatt hour versions of which offer a slightly longer range than this Citroen, and the slightly cheaper Nissan Leaf, volume 40 kilowatt hour versions of which can't go quite as far. Uh, you might also be looking at uh, comparably priced compact EV hatch models like the Kia e Nero, the Hyundai Ioniq Electric and the BMW i3. And of course, there are plenty of compact SUV all-electric hatches in this segment at about that price point too. Enough with price comparisons. Let's say that this Citroen's quirky appeal has taken your fancy and you're interested enough to see just how well it's been kitted out. Well, all C4 trim levels come with core model features like progressive hydraulic cushion suspension, Citroen LED vision headlights and a 5.5 inch backlit TFT driver's instrument cluster. All EC4 models get 18 inch cross light diamond cut alloy wheels too. In addition, base sense trim gives you LED front fog lamps with a cornering function, welcome and follow me home lighting for when you unlock or leave the car, uh, auto headlamps and wipers, tinted rear side windows, rear parking sensors, a speed limiter with cruise control and a decent standard of camera safety kit. Now we're going to get to that in a few minutes. Inside with sense spec, you're treated to automatic air conditioning, uh, a dual height boot floor, a storage drawer on the front cabin, plus there's a 10 inch center dash mounted touchscreen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone integration, plus a six speaker DAB audio system, voice activation and Bluetooth. 
Most C4 customers, though, will be starting their range perusal with Sense Plus trim, if only to get the popular PureTech 130 petrol engine that we're trying here. Uh, Sense Plus spec additionally gets you power folding mirrors, an anti-theft alarm, a rear view camera and an electrochrome auto dimming rear view mirror. That's along with a head up display, LED interior lighting, extra connectivity ports and the brand's innovative smart pad support Citroen tablet holder for front seat passengers. Uh, there is also Citroen Connect Nav Navigation with TomTom Tom Live services. Now these services include live traffic and destination information, uh, fuel pricing and weather information too, as well as speed camera and danger zone alerts. Moving up to the mid-range Shine trim level gets you keyless entry and start, adaptive cruise control, auto high beam headlights, front parking sensors and the heated steering wheel is standard. Plus there's a smarter look with extra tinting for the rear windows and a lower chrome glass house strip, along with more camera safety tech too, which we'll get onto in a minute. At the top of the range, this Shine Plus model provides audio files with Citroen's premium Archimus Hi-Fi system featuring an uprated eight-speaker setup, A-pillar tweeters and the addition of a subwoofer. The feeling of opulence on board is enhanced with a hype black interior ambiance that features black sienna leather and textile upholstery and intricate zephyr grey stitching. You'll also get uh, fitted carpet mats, heated front seats, a rear armrest and a ski hatch. And for added comfort out on the road, a highway driver assist system that uses camera technology to adapt the speed and the direction of the vehicle under certain driving conditions. Further technological additions include a wireless smartphone charging pad and extra USB sockets in the rear. Enough with standard spec, what about options? Well, the first thing a C4 or EC4 customer is going to want to do is to get the look of their car right. So let's start with the colour packs, which will be available to you provided you've avoided base sense trim and which colour coordinate the surrounds for the front fog lamps and the lower side air bump panels. With Sense Plus trim, you can pay extra for these exterior elements uh, and have metallic sand surrounding trim, or with certain paint colours, you can have them surrounded instead in anodized deep red. With the plusher Shine and Shine Plus trim levels, uh, which on the combustion models get this textured grey pack finishing as standard, these two extra colour packs are available as a no-cost option, as is one with glossy black finishing. With the EC4, there are no extra costs for colour packs. Uh, depending on the paint colour you choose, you'll get either the anodised blue or the textured grey one with the metallic sand and anodised deep red packs, again being no cost options. We've been talking about exterior paint colours. You'll want to get the panel work finished just right, in which case you'll need to bear in mind that you're almost certainly going to have to pay your dealer more for your choice of paint colour. Uh, there is one standard solid shade, and that's polar white. Uh, there is a range of extra cost metallic colours, uh, obsidian black for example, or you can instead pay even more for the premium metallic shade of elixir red that we have here. Uh, you can't do very much to fashion up the cabin though, although Citroen does offer mid-range shine customers the option of uh, paying more for the hype black interior ambiance package that you get with top Shine Plus trim. Uh, now this gets you black sienna leather and textile upholstery with smart zephyr grey stitching. And on a combustion engine model, uh, that pack will also include some fitted carpet mats, heated front seats, uh, a rear armrest too, and a ski hatch. Shine customers can also add in the upgraded Citroen Archimus Hi-Fi setup and the highway driver assist system too. What else? Well, with the base two trim levels, you can add keyless entry and with base sense trim, you can add in Citroen Connect Nav to the centre dash screen. Bear in mind on models fitted with the neat smart pad support Citroen tablet holder, you'll have to find £100 more if you want that fitted out to hold either an Apple iPad Air 2 or a 10.5 inch Samsung Galaxy Tablet A. On the two Shine models, you can add in an opening glazed sunroof, a heated steering wheel and a city park pack, which steers you into spaces with a 360 degree camera. With the top two trims, there's also the option of a connected cam Citroen package, and that'll give you a full HD camera built into the rear view mirror, and that can take photos or videos stored on a 16 gigabyte memory card. 
And finally, if you really want to treat yourself with this top Shine Plus variant, you can further add an electrically powered driver's seat with electric lumbar adjustment and a massage function too. Across the lineup, a range of practical extra touches are available. For the rear, you can add in side and rear window sun blinds, tablet holders that attach to the back of the rear headrests, a headrest hanger, a cigarette lighter, a front seat back protector, a portable LED reading lamp, and an isothermal module to keep stuff cool. For the cargo area, you could add a rigid boot tray, a mat or a boot net, plus there's boot sill protector film. And you can add roof bars that will allow you to carry bicycles, skis or a roof box. Other practical additions you could consider include a tow bar, snow chains, front door air deflectors and a space over spare wheel. You can also add mud flaps, front seat covers, uh, door sill trims and different types of carpet mat with bespoke mats available for the EC4. Uh, for that electrified model, if you don't already have a garage wall box, you'll have to budget extra for the one that Citroen can supply through its partner Podpoint. Uh, plus, if you have access to a three-phase charging supply, either at home or at work, you can pay £300 more to get your car fitted up with the 11 kilowatt onboard charger, which will be needed for that. All EC4 customers will be offered a universal charger, a charging cable bag and an interior car park cover too. As for safety, while Citroen boasts of the fact that this car offers no fewer than 20 different driver assistance features, but inevitably provision of these varies quite a lot depending on the model and trim level you choose. All versions of this C4 get the brand's standard safety pack, and that includes an active safety brake autonomous braking system. Now that detects hazards ahead, and it'll apply the brakes if the driver doesn't react. Uh, disappointingly, though, uh, in its standard form, that setup can't work at night or detect cyclists. For that, it has to have video camera functionality as well, which uh, Citroen supplies as part of the active safety brake 2.0 package, which it fits to all the EC4s and to the top two Shine trim levels. Adding this more advanced active safety brake package into the two combustion engine base levels of spec costs a lot more, although that extra outlay will also get you the speed limit information traffic sign picturing system, which the top spec variants and all EC4s have as standard. Across the range, all C4s get forward collision warning, which alerts you if you're getting too close to the vehicle in front. And there's also lane keeping assist, and that'll alert you if you drift out of your lane on the highway, and it'll subtly steer you back to where you ought to be. And there's also driver attention warning. Now that will alert you if uh, drowsiness is detected in the driver. More important still is the standard Citroen Connect Box Emergency and Assistance System and that's a package which will automatically alert the emergency services with your exact location if the airbags go off. The two Shine spec models also get active blind spot detection and that alerts you if you're just about to dangerously pull out to overtake in front of another vehicle and it will, if necessary, automatically brake the car to avoid an accident. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, these two top variants also get high beam assist headlamps too. Passive safety kit fitted across the range includes in-crash braking, which in an impact will brake the car to prevent it from flying off and hitting something else. Uh, there's also the usual twin front airbags, although no driver's knee bag, plus row one side thorax bags and row one and two curtain airbags, along with Isofix charge seat fastenings, a hill start assist, and the usual electronic assistance for braking, traction and stability control. So, what will be more cost effective for a C4 customer, fossil fuel or battery power? Well, as ever with these things, the answer is not straightforward, but we'll try and give you a steer on the solution that will be right for you, and that's based primarily around the comparison that most customers for this Citroen will be making, petrol variants uh, versus full electric. At first glance, the cost equation might seem straightforward. The Department of Transport tells us that the average motorist in the UK covers 7,400 miles a year, which is a kind of mileage that would cost an EC4 owner somewhere between two and 300 pounds in added electricity charges, powering up 
from a typical 7.4 kilowatt garage wall box on off-peak rates. The variance depends on driving style and different electricity prices. We've assumed 11 pence per kilowatt hour. The same annual mileage in this PureTech petrol model would work out to somewhere between 750 and 820 pounds, and you'd have to factor in more expensive annual garage servicing too. But of course, it's not as simple a decision as that. Uh, for one thing, the EC4 costs nearly £6,000 more to buy than an equivalently trimmed PureTech petrol model, or well over £7,000 more if you compare an EC4 against an equivalently trimmed manual gearbox C4 PureTech variant. It's also worth pointing out that while fuel is fairly consistently priced wherever you purchase it from, electricity isn't. Uh, basing your calculations around activating this car's 11 kilowatt onboard charger and charging from home is all very well, but that doesn't take account of the higher prices which will apply on public charging sites. Certain parts of this country's public charging infrastructure will relieve you of up to 69 pence per kilowatt hour of electricity for battery replenishment of that sort, which works out to about 17 pence per mile, compared to about 10 pence per mile for the petrol derivative. Plus, you have to factor in extra tyre wear too on the electric model and potentially greater depreciation, although the jury is still out on that. Citroen bullishly predicts a 49% retained value for an EC4 Shine Plus variant after three years and 20,000 miles. Um, a petrol model would probably have travelled a bit further after three years of use. A three-year, 60,000-mile retained value for a PureTech 130 manual gearbox C4 is estimated at 39%. And then there are the usual EV issues. Firstly, of course, the fear of running out of charge. As we said in our driving experience section, the EC4 has a WLTP rated range figure of 217 miles, but replicating that would require a Miss Marple-esque driving style. Even if you can live with a more typical 170 to 180 mile figure between charges, there's also the fear that you might turn up at a charging point and find that it's out of order or that there's a queue. Or perhaps you'll plug in your EV at night, uh, then an hour later you'll find out that you're required 150 miles away, but you only have 80 miles charged into the battery. If a car like this is a second car, of course, as it will be in many cases, then those issues become less problematic. But until they're solved and until prices become more accessible, then more customers of cars like this will tend towards the fossil fuel option. Of course, choosing fossil fuel will mean paying more tax. With the EC4, as with its direct EV rivals, you'll be rated at just 1% for benefiting kind taxation for the first tax year of use, and at only 2% for the subsequent two years. Compare that to the 27 to 29% BIK rate that applies to this petrol model, or indeed to the equivalent blue HDI diesel variants. Of course, to make a proper judgment, uh, you're going to have to peruse thoroughly the combustion model efficiency figures. Uh, they are very class competitive, actually. The volume PureTech 130 EAT Auto C4 we're trying here uh, returns up to 50.3 mpg on the combined cycle and up to 130 grams per kilometer of CO2, or up to 54.7 mpg and up to 120 grams per kilometer in manual gearbox form. With the PureTech 155 Auto model, the figures are up to 48.8 mpg and up to 133 grams per kilometre. As for the Blue HDI diesel variants, well, to give you an idea, a plush Shine Spec Blue HDI 130 E88 Auto model manages up to 64.5 mpg and up to 120 grams per kilometre. If you don't use fuel in your C4, then you're going to have to use charge. Going for the EC4 variant, of course, requires the purchase of a garage wall box if you don't already have one. Uh, because a domestic three-pin plug would give this car just 62 miles of running charge every nine hours, charging the battery completely in that low-tech fashion would take a yawning 28 hours. So an EC4 customer would need to take advantage of the way that the government subsidizes wall boxes. Uh, the purchase and installation of that uh, any Citroen dealer can arrange via the brand's association with Podpoint. Uh, with a 7.4 kilowatt wall box in place, a charge from empty would take seven and a half hours with a single phase supply. 
If your home or office has a three-phase supply though, a point of purchase, you can pay the extra to get your EC4 fitted up with the optional 11 kilowatt charger and you can reduce that charging time to five hours. Out and about in an EC4, the seven kilowatt or 11 kilowatt public chargers you might come across won't be much quicker than your garage wall box, but if you can find a 20 kilowatt public terminal, you'll be able to replenish the battery at the rate of 87 miles of charge for every hour that you're sat cabled up. The gutsy 100 kilowatt rapid chargers that are just starting to be installed on the motorways, they're quite rare, but there are more of those in Europe and if you can find one, then you'll be able to uh, get up to 80% charge in just 30 minutes. We mentioned cheaper servicing for the EC4 earlier. Well, that's just based on consumables. The BEV variant has the same service internal requirement as the combustion ones every year or 16,000 miles, whichever comes first. Uh, whatever your choice of powertrain though, so you can budget ahead, uh, the French maker offers its Citroen maintenance scheme and that lets you pay either a one-off fee or alternatively monthly instalments to cover the cost of the routine upkeep of your car for as long as three years and 35,000 miles. Uh, you can manage maintenance schedules via the My Citroen app and you can also get eco-driving advice. Uh, that same application, incidentally, will allow you to pre-program charging times with an EC4 and to precondition the cabin so you don't have to waste battery energy ramping up the climate fan to heat or cool the interior when you get in. The C4 PureTech owner will claw back a bit in insurance costs over the EC4 variant, but the difference isn't huge. A volume uh, C4 PureTech 130, like this one, is rated at Group 19E. It's Group 13E for the 100 horsepower version, or Group 21E for the 155 horsepower. A Blue HDI 110 manual diesel model is rated at Group 16E, or Group 20 or 21E for the 130 horsepower auto version. In comparison to all that, an EC4 comes in at Group 22P. Every C4 and EC4 comes with a three-year and 60,000-mile warranty, and there's also Europe-wide breakdown assistance included from you for the first year you own the car. Looking at the longer term, you'll have a 12-year guarantee against rust and 36 months cover for any paintwork defects, although that doesn't include stone chips and other wear and tear damage. This is the second stage of Citroen's rejuvenation as a modern brand. The first, an era which kicked in back in 2017, was based around SUVs and proved quite successful with C3 Aircross and C5 Aircross models, which had, by 2021, given the French maker over half a million sales. You sense, though, that this second assault, this one targeted at the European family hatchback segment, which still accounts for over 11% of the entire market, will prove more challenging for the double chevron mark. So it's just as well that this third generation C4 is a distinctive proposition, the kind of thing that every Citroen should be. This famous maker can afford to be a bit quirkier than the other Stellantis Group brands. And you might find that refreshing if you happen to want a compact family hatch, which is a bit more individual. The French maker thinks that this sector is ripe for changes and this car delivers them without getting carried away with innovation as its C4 Cactus predecessor rather did. And it's obviously significant that within the range lies the brand's first credible full electric model. Whatever drivetrain you choose for it, this third generation C4 certainly ticks the two currently trending themes of crossover style and electrified power. Yet we think it delivers them within a family hatchback package that traditional buyers in this segment can be comfortable with. And comfort here is, as usual, the Citroen Keynote. Travelling comfort, thanks to the progressive hydraulic cushion suspension and the squashy seats. Comfort of the mind, thanks to the soothing cabin ambiance. And comfort of use, thanks to the 20 available driving assistance technologies. Now, unless all those things are priorities for you, you probably won't like this car at all. But if they are, or they can be, then you'll probably really appreciate what the brand has tried to do here. Ultimately, what really matters is that what we have here is a proper Citroen, with all that that means. Thank goodness for that.